This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and tonight from downtown St. Louis, a beautiful evening in the Gateway City as the St. Louis Cardinals play host to the Philadelphia Phillies in game three of their four-game series. Offense, the story of Major League Baseball last night. There were seven teams that scored ten or more runs. That included the St. Louis Cardinals, and the three Mets were a big part of that. Thirteen total bases for Carpenter, Holiday, and Adams. A change at the top of the lineup for game number three as Peter Borges will play center field in bat leadoff for St. Louis. And along with Tim McCarver, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us for baseball tonight on Fox Sports Midwest. Cardinals were really bunching together hits last night, and it paid off in a big way. I finally got the keys to the game right. <laughs> Said that they've got to bunch it and score multiple runs, and that's exactly what they did in five of the, nine, of the eight innings last night. They scored more than one run. All right, good matchup here tonight. Longtime vet in the major leagues. That's Aaron Harang going for the Phils. For the Cardinals, the youngster, Carlos Martinez. Baseball comes your way next.
Carpenter will bat. Carpenter will bat second again tonight for Mike Matheny's club. Just how hot is this start? It is historic. Most consecutive multi-hit games at home to begin a season. Carpenter right now with eight. You have to go back to 1930 and 1922 with some names that have matched 2015 and Matt Carpenter. It's Aaron Harang tonight. Carlos Martinez. The Cards. The Bills. Folks just outside Ballpark Village. Light. It reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices on our all-new 2015 vehicles today. 70 years in Major League Baseball for Red Shandinst, and that's one of the exhibits you can find over at the Cardinals Hall of Fame and Museum. And by the way, at 6 o'clock 
Monday before the Cubs game. We'll have an exclusive announcement of the Cardinals Hall of Famers for 2015. Revere, Herrera, Utley here in the first. Francor, Howard, Ashy, Ruiz, Galvis, and Harang. First pitch by Carlos Martinez is taken high and outside, and we're underway here at Bush Stadium. Martinez has been terrific. 2-0 and oh and three starts. Look at that earned run average. 1.35. His opponent tonight, 1.37. We'll see. The changeup has been a difference maker this year for Carlos Martinez, now in the starting rotation, and Tim, in particular, against left-handed batters. Well, you mentioned that. I mean, uh, it's absolutely, as a starter, you've got to have an off-speed pitch. Off of Martinez to the second baseman, Colt Long went away. Look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal this year for Carlos Martinez. Little you smile. You never saw that when he was in the bullpen. That breakdown right there because the changeup did not exist. Fastball slider from the bullpen. If he doesn't get a piece of that, that's probably a leadoff hit. Good carom to Wong. As far as the Cardinals were concerned. Martinez fields his position as well as anybody. So quick. Former shortstop mm -hmm. in the Red Sox organization. Now it's Herrera and he chops it foul. Herrera had his sixth double of the season last night. Eight extra base hits. Most by a Phillies rookie in April. He could play a little bit, huh? Fun to watch. Yeah, he is. Good speed. Good center fielder. Power. Phillies dealing with Dominic Brown, who has an Achilles injury. He could come off the disabled list. Matter of fact, he's eligible right now. The Phillies said, well, wait a minute. Stay down in the minor leagues. We didn't say come up. There's a strikeout of Herrera. So Dominic Brown is right now in the minor leagues and has 72 hours to report and in the first 24 hours did not report. Dobbs Tyron Auto Centers, Holiday Borges and Hayward in the outfield, Carpenter, Peralta, Wong and Adams on the infield. Yadier Molina is behind the plate. Of all the pitches that hitters hate, the disappearing slider is the one that they, I mean, hate. You can't pick it up. You think it's going to be a strike. Last minute, it darts down. And that's what Martinez got Herrera on. Watch this pitch. Disappears. Missed it by a foot. Makes a man look like a little boy. Here's an 0 1 pitch to Chase Utley. Ground ball, right side. Good first inning for Carlos Martinez. Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first. No score.
six and two here at Bush Stadium. Philadelphia just two and seven on the road. Peter Borges will lead it off for the Cardinals, followed by Matt Carpenter, then Matt Holiday. Adams will bat cleanup. Then we'll see Peralta, Hayward, and Molina Wong and Martinez to round out the starting nine for St. Louis. Aaron Harang off to a great start. Same lineup for the Cardinals with the exception of their one and nine hitters. Mike Matheny trying to get Peter Borges some at bats, understandably. And Borges hits a fly ball into right center. Herrera with good speed over and makes the play on the run. Hyundai pitch arsenal for the righty Aaron Harang. It's like a keyboard up there. He throws everything a lot. He'll Very turn. effective his last start. Two hits in eight innings against Atlanta. No run scored. We've seen him a lot. He'll turn 37 next month. And opponents so far only hitting 165 against Aaron Harang. And a strike to Matt Carpenter, who is third in the National League in hitting at 380. And his teammate on deck is fourth, Matt Holliday at 383. He has not had a bad at bat all year. He's made some outs, obviously. Not on bad at bats. Some of the numbers are just staggering when they you look really at are. it. I mean, 12 doubles in 19 games, mm. 437 on base percentage. 53 doubles two years ago. Most doubles since Stan Musial had 55 in 1953. And when you're next to Stan Musial in any offensive category, that's pretty good. <laughs> There's a ground ball and it's pulled foul. Let's take a look at the pregame. Uh, Dan and I were watching Harang warm up. He warmed up with a weighted ball. Even throwing a curve ball with a weighted ball from about eh, 30 feet. Then he changes back to the regular ball there. I don't think I've ever seen that, Dan. No. Usually when pitchers use the weighted ball, they use it for exercising and, and again, understandably, understandably to make the regular ball seem lighter when they throw it. But to actually throw a weighted ball, I don't think I've ever seen a pitcher do that. Three and two, the count on Carpenter. Tim, 30 hits this year for Matt Carpenter. 17 have come with two strikes. On the inside corner, strikeout of Carpenter. That call goes Harang's way. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. Was it a strike? Yep. A little tailing fastball, that arms up fastball that right handers use against left handed batters, but you rarely see a left handed pitcher use it against a right handed batter. You almost never see a right hander with the arms up, mm -hmm. occasionally. But not much. Here's Holiday. He's four for seven so far with a double in this series. Phillies defense tonight behind Aaron Harang, presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Revere, Herrera, Francor in the outfield. Ashy, Galvis, Utley, Howard. That quartet along the infield. Ruiz is behind the plate. Watch out. Oh, what a backhanded play here by Utley. Tremendous play, Chase Utley. Man.
lead it off for the Phils and a gorgeous night for baseball here in the Gateway City. Tim, I was doing some numbers for the Phillies. They were hitting right around 220 as a team. Mm -hmm. But three, four, and five this year in the lineup collectively hitting 159 oh my gosh. with an on-base percentage of 230. Three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. And in this series, it's been Utley, Fran, Corb, and Howard. There's Colt Wong again. That's a second odd ball back through the box. One was gloved by Martinez, Karam to Wong. And that one was between the wickets of Carlos. Two adventurous plays by Wong. Certainly not routine four to three putouts. That did it went right right through his legs, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. At first I thought it may have got him a little bit, but that went right through the legs. Mm -hmm. Here's Ryan Howard and the shift used on the big slugger from St. Louis. Backhanded by Wong. Shallow right field, and he makes the play. How about that? A second baseman with an arm strong enough to play shallow right field, go to his right, and still get his man. Carpenter diving for the ball. There's Carpenter on his stomach. How about that play? He gives you glimpses, doesn't he, of just how good he could be? I think the only guy in the National League with a stronger arm as a second baseman is Danny Espinosa. We saw him last week with Washington. Cody Ashey and a strike. So that last pitch at 95. Velocity for Martinez has dipped a little bit, but that's a byproduct of being a starter. That's hit at a center field. Trying to go deeper into games. Not and, that he's pacing himself right. in the process either. That's the, that's the the slippery wicket as a starter. I was trying to think of what term I could use. I don't know how it came out of sli slippery wicket. I guess we've used it once a inning. But it, I mean, it really, uh, you're not pacing yourself. It's that your fastball is better. When you're in a jam like Justin Verlander, I think he's the, the prototypical starting pitcher. He starts out with a fastball that's not quite as fast as it would be in the middle innings or in the early innings when he's in trouble. Real key when you talk to the Cardinals personnel about Martinez. The one word you hear all the time. Efficiency. You know can he get you past six innings. There's a ground ball that's hit to short. And a flip to Colt Wong. 6 4 on the fielder's choice.
by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Quality, reliability, and value. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search STIHL. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Matt Adams, Johnny Peralta, and Jason Hayward against Aaron Harang. Little bloop down the left field line, and that drops foul. Strike one. I was thinking about this after the game last night. You know, they have blinders for horses in races to keep them from seeing peripherally the other horse next to him to his right and his left. You'd think Nike would come up with a, a thing right. for blinders for, the shift. for a hitter for the shift. <laughs> right. Just... That smoked out to center field. Herrera back. He won't get it off the wall. Adams digging for two. And in there safely. That was just a line shot off the wall in center field. You know, it's funny. I was going to ask you as a hitter how much the shift would bother you as a hitter. You know, I think it, I think it messes with the mind more than it does the body. Of course, when you hit a ball this hard and this far, no shift in baseball is going to make the difference. I mean, think about it, Tim. Little League High School, and for Matt Adams, he played college ball. Never happened before. No. And in the right. minor leagues? No. 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 And it just started no. the last couple of years. Right. Here's Peralta, who's 10 for 30 with a pair of home runs off of Harang. I mean, when you hit a ball hard enough for there to be a play on you at second base on a carom off the center field wall, that ball got out there in a hurry. Even though Matt is a slow runner, I understand that. It's sharply to third. Cody Ashey looking back. Matt Adams. Let's turn to Tim McCarver's Toyota keys to the game. So you're going to hang me with them again, right? Tight defense behind Carlos Martinez, and certainly Wong has done his part thus far. And production from the one hole, Peter Borges, coming into this game seven for 15. And Mike Matheny saying before the game that he is determined to get Peter Borges some at bats. Because before the season's over, they're going to need him. Here's Jason Hayward. You think about it, if you're a championship team, more times than not, when you go back and look at teams that win a division, go deep into a postseason, really their roster will be about 30, 35 deep before it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. The players that they have to use. Right. Triple A teams sure. used even more in that particularly variety now. It's almost an extension of your major league team. To John Jay, the night off, at least for the time being. One ball and one strike on Hayward. Hayward, base hit into left. Adams had to make sure that that got through. It's bobbled, and he'll stay put at third. George Kissel, George Kissel used to say in situations like that, round and look, which means round the bag and look to where the ball was hit. And that makes so much sense because there's nobody there to keep you close. The short stops toward the center. He's out of the play, but look at the third baseman. He's your, he's your cutoff man. So if you round the bag and look, then maybe, maybe, I don't think with mad speed, he's going to take that chance, but you're in a better position to do it. Sure. Here's Yadier Molina, runners at first and third. Now time is called. The Cardinals last night were 8 for 15 with runners in scoring position in game one against Cole Hamels primarily, and in the game before that against Milwaukee, 4 for 32. Ooh. So one out, two on. Down the right field line and out of play. 
good to see Jason Hayward doing what he was practicing doing yesterday. Hitting the ball to left field and up the middle. Stay away from that 4-3 put out. I think a drop in the lineup takes a little pressure off of him right now too. Sure, absolutely. No balls and a strike. Harang steps off the pitching rubber. Popped up. Got in on the hands of Molina, and it's Howard who takes it. Two away. Big out there. And it brings in second baseman Colt Wong. Tim, I'm not sure it will happen. But if you go back and look at when Colt Wong makes a couple of really good plays defensively, and it happened in Washington. And you said it in Washington. Boy, were you on. And it just seems like, and I don't know if the numbers bear out, but it seems like you can predict that he's going to have a good game at the plate. We shall see. Rees went out to visit with Harang. You got the pitcher on deck. And the first pitch to Colton Wong. That's just a visit to make the hitter think. That's all. I mean, here you are in the second inning, scoreless ball game. There's no way you're going to pitch around the guy to get to the pitcher in this situation. I mean, he may walk him, but it's not the unintentional, intentional brand. Here's a 1 0. Drops in for his strike, one ball and one strike. Mentioned that Harang's ERA is 1.37. Only other time he had an opening month ERA under three was in 2008. He was with Cincinnati at that time. The 1 1. Eight years with the Reds. Originally drafted. By Texas did not sign then back in the draft as he went to college signed by Oakland he's been with San Diego the Dodgers Seattle the Mets and Atlanta. Here's a 2 1. Oh and six in his last eight starts against the Cardinals even though his ERA is about three and a half. I'd look for a breaking ball here if I were Wong. The three one. He got it. There's your base hit into center field. One to nothing Cardinals. Colton Wong comes through with RBI number seven. I don't think Colton would have done that last year. But he's matured. He gets the breaking ball. Hammers it right back up the middle. Good hitting. Good thinking by Wong. It's part of the maturation process, isn't it? When you get yes. to this level, thinking along with the pitcher. Absolutely. You know all those trips to the mound that Wong makes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, the, a lot of experience in those trips to the mound. Here's Carlos Martinez. And I go back to last night, early innings with Severino Gonzalez, the 22 year old making his major league debut, a control pitcher. And you get to this level, and when you're a control pitcher in the minor leagues, the guys up here, more times than not, they stay away. Yeah. So then you yes. edge a little bit closer, and that's when you get beat around. Michael Walker there on the right, John Lackey on the left. Walker at 1.17 consecutive strikes in the game last night and then in the fifth we saw a couple of walks and a mm -hmm. hit batter in the sixth mm -hmm. so it helped his cause at the plate a couple of RBIs one ball and two strikes And a strikeout of Martinez. 
A two out RBI from Cardinal second baseman Colton Wong. His seventh this year. Tim said, You're going to get the breaking ball. He did. Was ready for it. One nothing after two. How good has Matt Holloway been so far? He's off to a ridiculous start. Came into the game hitting 383, a major league leading on base percentage of 500, and he's hitting 600 with runners in scoring position. So I asked Matt his take on what he's done so far, and he told me he's hit the ball well, but he wishes he had more homers and doubles. He told me he doesn't focus on the power numbers, just taking good at bats, but he says for whatever reason, he's just not getting much loft on the ball. He says it could be that his swing is a little flat that he can't quite get under the ball. But he says you start thinking about it and you could mess everything up. And Dan he says he's confident the homers will come until then. He'll just keep trying to hit the ball hard which he's done and then some. All right Jimmy thanks. I think that's uh, it's really a well thought out point because you can't force home runs. Home runs are a matter of loft. Often, not necessarily strength. That's what uh, Matt has, has said. You can't force it. And is he ever right? One ball, one strike on Aaron Harang. Boy, Colton Wong has been busy so far. Part of, what, five different plays? I can't believe I just saw that. Aaron Harang with a base hit. All due respect, when he was with Cincinnati, I had a better chance. <laughs> wow. Well, your former college catcher. Again. <laughs> Brutal catcher. Brutal hitter. Wow. MLB on Fox Sports 1 continues with another doubleheader starting on uh, the West Coast. Italy showdown. Angels and Giants. Then the Reds squaring off against the Braves. Coverage begins at 2.30 on your home for baseball every Saturday. Fox Sports 1. Why do you continue catching in the fantasy camps then? Well, you leave me messages that make me realize there's no reason I should ever do it. Don't you ever do me, that yeah. again. <laughs> I told you last year, don't ever do that again. <laughs> I heard you caught. Don't do that. The nastiest message. <laughs> Dan, and I meant every word Tim. of it. I said, oh man, he's really mad now. Don't do that. Ben Revere. Back to Martinez, off his glove just like the first time, and he underhands it, gets the force play at second. That was just like the first at bat off the glove of 
Carlos Martinez. Boy, that was a big league play, wasn't it? Sure was. Great reactions as a pitcher. One of the best athletes, if not the best athletes, on the Cardinal roster. Flags it down, underhands it to second. Of course, the pitcher was running, but how many times do you see a pitcher underhand the throw to second for the force out? Off balance a little bit, yeah, too. Yeah. Recovered very nicely. Think about the pitching staff this time last year. Sam Freeman, great athlete now at Texas. Joe Kelly, very good athlete as well, could run. And all three, if you include Martinez, were three of the fastest guys on the team. Yeah. And they're pitchers. So two outs and Herrera. Herrera is playing above double A for the first time in his career. And he's made an impression. Led the Texas League in hitting last year with a 321 average. Good looking player. Rule five guy. You know, you talk to the Phillies, Cole Hamels, who knows about Utley and Howard, but Hamels, the big chip out there, clearly. And they mention position players. They need them. And everybody is safe. If they would make a deal, Tim, they like their young pitching. They think it's getting better and better, and there's some good young pitching, especially around A ball. A few double A pitchers they like, uh, like, but they say position players and youth is where they need a big improvement organizational wide. Mm -hmm. Johnny Peralta did all he could with that ground ball. Sometimes balls are hit where nobody is. So here is Chase Utley. Twenty strikes of the twenty five pitches he's thrown. And the first pitch is popped up. Broke the bat of Chase Utley and Adams puts it away. Philly strand two. They've left three on tonight. We're midway through three. Cardinals on top. size drink is just 50 cents the next day that's coffee fountain frozen drinks when they score you pour at your nearest on the run you earned it top of the lineup for the Cardinals and Peter Borges 
showing bunt and a strike. Peter flied out to right center field first time up. Peter trying to bunt the ball to first base. Ryan Howard was playing him back. He gets it down. Probably a hit. As everybody knows, he can fly. Peeking down at third again. Ashy is even with the bag at third base. Aaron Harang coming into this game first time through a lineup had given up just two hits. Two Man. for 35. The opponents in the Cardinals first time through bettered that with three hits. O2 pitch and a strikeout of Borges. Ruiz finds it. Third strikeout for the right hander Aaron Harang. Well, think about it, Dan. For a team that's not a home run hitting team, how are you going to score if you don't bunch hits? That's the way it's got to be. It, it, that's the way it's got to be. Now the Cardinals clearly have hit doubles, most of them coming from Matt Carpenter. Holiday told Jim about the home runs. Right. It's on his mind, but he has not hit a home run except one in Milwaukee. So you're gonna have to bunch hits together right preferably with none or one out and it comes then to the point of base running of being good base runners very to generate important. very very important but in the second inning Matt Adams leads off of the double and scores the only run of the game. Borderline pitch first time up Carpenter struck out. Two balls in one strike. You seeing a different approach with Carpenter. I mean the numbers have been as we said astonishing but are you seeing anything different. Well he's hit, hitting more balls earlier in the count not this at bat. But you know, when you're a combination. This year he's been a good first ball hitter and he's still a good two strike hitter. That's a tough tandem sure for a hitter. I mean if your hands are quick enough and your eyes are good enough and he takes the walks. Not many weaknesses. The two two. The confidence to hit with two strikes. You don't hear many say boy I love hitting with two strikes. No. Matt uh, Carpenter says and I invite it. We pointed it out last night. I think he's a power hitter with two strikes. Sure. And most guys that hit that are good two strike hitters are content in just hitting the ball the other way. Just putting the bat on the ball. Not Matt. Two two swung on and missed and he strikes out for the second time. So three in a row for Harang. With the strikeouts and four total. Lowest ERAs this season. Deslafani of Cincinnati, Scherzer, Zach Greinke, Carlos Martinez, and Aaron Harang. I think you would expect Scherzer and Greinke. The other three, not so much. Greinke going tonight for the Dodgers against San Francisco at Dodger Stadium. Talk in Cincinnati that Homer Bailey could be done for the year. Oh, boy. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Holiday. To further the point in the start about Matt Holiday, he's 35 years old. He's going to hit 350 for this first month. Only two other Cardinals have done that at this age. Stan the Man and Lance Berkman. Wow. Two pretty good hitters. That's 100 plus years of baseball. By the way, Stan the Man, 528, month of April, age 37.
the T-Mobile game changer. Last six Cardinals to hit 478 or better at home. First 23 at bats. Edmonds, Holiday, Carpenter, Hector Luna. It's a Rule 5 pickup. Bo Hart was on that, and so was Mike Matheny. The Bo Hart craze still lives on here in town, too. Oh, yeah. I ran into him in Memphis last winter. He lives there, I think. He does? Now, yeah. And he's also, I believe, working for the Memphis Redbirds. Right. On their uh, right. radio broadcast. Now, I guarantee you're listening to our telecast tonight. Good guy. No, great guy. Here's an 0-2 to Frank Core, and that swung on and missed. 96 from Carlos Martinez. That was our point earlier about reaching back occasionally, and you can do that. You don't have to do it every pitch like you did when you were in the bullpen. But as a starter, I high. You know, Tony the Russo, when young players came through, was always very careful about if they got on fire and made a name for themselves. He had a way of making sure to keep things, egos. Keep them level. Keep them level. Mm -hmm. We're in Kansas City, and this is Ryan Howard. And Bohart is the talk of baseball. I mean, he is on fire. He's mm -hmm. making every play. He's hitting home runs. We're thinking, where did this guy come from? He's in. He's turning into an international international sensation. Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting in the office with Tony La Russa, and ESPN Radio called, and one of the Cardinals personnel came in and said, Tony, I know you probably don't want to hear this. ESPN Radio and TV would like to do an interview with Bo Hart. So I'll go ahead and tell him that Bo is unavailable. I'm sure, pretty much assuming that's what you want. He said, no. He said, God bless Bo Hart. He may not be here in two more weeks, and we may never see him again. Give him every interview he can get. Oh, that's great. And he said, get him out that's there. It's a great story. Get him out there. And he's the only guy I've ever heard him do that with. Mm -hmm. But he knew. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it was a great story at the time. You didn't know how long he was going to last. But it was fun while it lasted. Mm -hmm. Bo Hart. Bo Hart was all heart. He was. The 3-1 pitch. And Howard hits a high fly ball out to deep right. Hayward is back at the wall, and it's gone. Hayward thought he had it. Instead, a solo home run for Ryan Howard, his fourth. And his 10th RBI ties it up at 1-1. I think what Jason is mad at is at himself that he get, didn't get back to the fence. The fence is not going to move. Outfielders are trained to do that. Get to the fence, and then if you have to come back, you can see him reaching. But he's not there in time to jump and make the catch at the apex. Otherwise, I think he makes that play. Almost back to the wall and, and somewhat flat-footed instead of the momentum coming well, back to that's it. That's because he arrived at the wall the same time the ball did. Good tailing action on that pitch. Ryan Howard has played in 33 games at this ballpark against his hometown team. 11 home runs, 39 RBIs, and he's hit 350 against the Cardinals. The 1 1. Right side and cold long. Two down. This Sunday, the Cardinals wrap up their series with the Pirates. It's an ice cream Sunday presented by Prairie Farms. Get here early while supplies last. Also, kids will get a free ticket voucher to a future home game for this year. Carlos Ruiz with two down. Ruiz grounded out his first time up. You know, when you think about that play with Hayward, by, by no means was it a a sure catch or anything like that. But if Jason's back at the wall and doesn't have the glove flop over, it has it sticking straight up, then his chances of making that play are much, much better. But when the glove went up, somehow his wrist got caught on the fence. Yeah. 
and there was uh, there was a full extension. Seeing his reaction, even yeah. though it had been a tough play, it's almost one of those that you think he says, "I should have made it." What a play that is! Johnny Peralta to his left and spinning to get Ruiz. Nicely done from the Cardinals shortstop. Comes up with a great play, and this was almost a great play. That close. That made it one to nothing to score Matt Adams. And Ryan Howard with this solo shot into the bullpen and right to tie it up at 1 1. The strike to Adams. That was career home run number. 338 in the uh, I think really good career of Ryan Howard. Some years much better than others. And that's the second highest all time total among players born in the state of Missouri behind Yogi Berra, born in St. Louis. He had 358 career home runs. Lawrence. You got it. Great soccer player on the hill. Down the street from Joe Garagiola. Tim, can you believe this stat? 7,555 at bats for Yogi Berra, only 414 strikeouts. Yes, I can believe it. I mean, that that's just staggering. I mean, you 13, think about it now, there's no chance that would happen. One MVP year, he struck out 13 times. Right. <laughs> it's incredible. Like 580 at bats or plate appearances. He has the most World Series rings ever. Ten. As a player. Right. And then five as a coach. So 15. Ted Williams called him the best clutch hitter ever to play for the Yankees. Is that right? That's with Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio. I think Williams said it. As a as a, a, a gnarled compliment to to Yogi because of DiMaggio. Sure. You know that. Uh, right. And, right. And this really upset DiMaggio. I could imagine. When, we, when Williams said that. But Williams wanted to be number one. So whether Ted believed it or not. I don't know. In the air to right. Adams is the first out. The 
yogiisms through all the years. Uh, one of the character. smartest people. And everybody, everybody tell you, Yogi's played this country for over 90 years. I think Yogi's be 91 this year, Correct. I believe. I think that's right. They had a falling out for a while with the boss and yep. with the Yankees, but then before Steinbrenner passed away, those two had made up and was back with the Yankees. 14 years, he would not go to Yankee Stadium. They had a meeting arranged by Susan Wallman, who is a an announcer for the Yankees with John Sterling Sterling right and um, the meeting was scheduled for five o'clock George shows up at 520 and guess what Yogi's first words were first time he spoken to him Peralta high fly ball into right center out number two in 14 years Yogi's first words to George were you're late <laughs> and that levels the playing right. field. I mean, Yogi's in charge. That's why he's so smart. He said, "You're late." Broke the ice. Uh, put him in the position of the driver's seat. Put him in a position looking down. Right. That's right. And the day he comes back on Yogi Berra Day, David Cohn pitches a no, a perfect game with Don Larson in the building. Amazing. Now that's spooky. That's amazing. It really is. Strike to Jason Hayward. I think that was July 19th, 1998. 99. David Wells was 98, and then Cones, or was Cones first? David Wells was 98. David's was second yeah. about 14, 14 months later. I believe that's right. And in 99. Here's a 1 1. Chop to the right side. Howard loves spins no play Hayward aboard so Jason Hayward is two for two he's now been on base five times since being moved to this spot in the lineup by the time Ryan Howard got to that ball Aaron Harang was barely at first base I think Jason would have beaten him to the bag anyway So a two out base hit it brings in Yadier Molina to sum it up Dan. I think anybody who's ever met Yogi Berra will have to agree that there is something maybe not everything but there's something mystical about the man. He walked into Camo X to promote a book one of his many books that he's written and there is something to be said about that when he walked down the halls and this is probably you know five seven years ago you expect to see a halo around this exactly. Head. You know, a tiny guy walking through the halls, smiling, laughing, shaking hands, taking pictures, and just people in awe of Yogi Berra. Really need to see. And pretty funny, too. Oh, my gosh. Here's a 1 0 pitch. And Molina hits it down the left field line. Well hit. Rivera is over and he makes the play. Jumping up against the wall. Speed helps, doesn't it, Dan? He had it last night. We saw a nice play down the left field line. And Ben Rivera with this play off the bat of Yadier Molina. Not quite Bo Jackson scaling the wall, but not bad either.
Freddie Galvis here in the top of five leads it off for the Phillies, followed by Aaron Harang and Ben Revere. Galvis, his fifth three hit game of the season last night. Tim, I, I use the term efficiency with Carlos Martinez trying to go deeper into games. How do you interpret the way that uh, the Cardinals are approaching Carlos Martinez? Well, I don't like that word, and I'll tell you why. Because it implies that the offense is going to cooperate, that they're going to swing at the first pitch, and if they make it out, they're going to make it on the first pitch. Sure. I hate to hear stuff like that. Because offensive players don't cooperate like that. They have minds of their own, of course. Trying to get on base, trying to get hits, center the ball, what have you. Foul the ball back, foul tough pitches back. So if 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 that efficiency implies cooperation from the offense, I don't like that term. I got you. That's I understand what they're doing though. That's, that's my point, though. Sure, you have naturally. Up the middle, Cole Belong can't get to that one. And Galvis is aboard. BJC Healthcare Difference Makers tonight are starters. Harang made his debut in 2002. Martinez in 2013 when he lit up the bullpen of the Cardinals in a championship run. So the grizzled veteran, if you will, against the young gun, Carlos Martinez. Harang with a base hit into right center, first time up. Example, Doc Gooden had one of the greatest years in the history of the game in 1985. 24-4 with a 1.53 earned run average. The following spring, all the articles in New York were saying, Doc Gooden's got to keep the ball down and have quicker innings. That was the beginning of his demise and other things, the drugs and all that yeah. sort of stuff. He had, he had uh, monster problems off the field. But he won, I think, 17 the world championship year. But that was the start of his demise when he started listening to keep the ball down. When the low ball pitcher, he was a high fastball pitcher with one of the great curveballs in the game. So you're saying four seamers, mid 90s to high 90s, and a great curveball that was truly 12 to 6. Let me tell you, when a guy's 24 and 4 with a 1.53 earned run average, I don't think anybody should have the guts. To say that he's got to change his style in pitching. Would make a no lot of sense. sense. Right. <laughs> Another situation. Mike Schmidt hits 196 his first full year up, but he hit a ton of home runs. They said everything's fine, but he's got to cut down on his strikeouts. What? The guy's only going to get better. He becomes a Hall of Famer, 548 home runs, and never cut down on strikeouts because he didn't listen to people. You got to listen to the right people and put the right things in effect, in my opinion. Three and one. My thinking when Carlos Martinez is a starter, when his effectiveness is finished, get him out of there and put somebody else in. Tony La Russa said in yesterday's paper, the bullpen's as important as the starters nowadays. Up and in to harangue. So he was trying to give him an out. A base hit by Galvis. Walk to harangue. Yeah, the Kansas City Royals uh, could attest to that as well. Kansas City's bullpen as good as anybody's a year ago in their postseason run. I think they may be better this year. Could be. Gooden was 17 and 6 in 86, 15 and 7 in 87. ERA steadily climbed after that too. Ben Revere is 0 for 2. The play here might be to second base if he tries to bunt. You have the pitcher running it first. You may just see that here. Molina though to third and they get the lead man. Speaking of Tony La Russa, I would ask him about two players defensively. Yadier Molina 
Albert Pujols at the time. He said what makes them great, he said there are others that have the physical skills that these two possess. He said they are fearless when it comes to plays like this. And boy, is this an example of that. But you know what helped on that play? Peralta coming behind Galvis right there, that two steps back. Daring Revere to take a shot to left sure. field, knowing he's not going to do it. Good point. So now it's Herrera with one out runners at first and second. And Harang is your runner at second base. I mean, the assist went to Yadier Molina on a fine play, but Peralta deserves an assist there, too. Herrera showing bunt. What's he thinking? 1-1 one, one ball game. Go ahead, run at second base. He's going to bunt. We'll leave it up to the next guy. Come on. Ryan Sandberg's going to have a talk with Odebell. Pete McCannon is the third base coach, and he looked down right away and said, swing the bat. And Odebell was smiling a little bit. <laughs> That's chopped towards first and a foul ball. And the first base coach is Juan Samuel, longtime Philly. What a player he was. Sammy. Pete McCannon on the other side, third base coach, around a long time and a good man. Sure is. Bob McClure is the pitching coach. Sandberg, the Manager Larry Boa bench coach 1-1 one, one. Good pitch on the inside corner Well Jeff Nelson who is the home plate umpire and crew chief punched him out. I thought he did and One I, and two I had and uh, so did the board here at the ballpark. I had to check the scoreboard Evidently he called it a ball with a strike call. Or I guess a, what is normally a strike, the right arm went up, didn't it? Yeah. Well, he punched him out. He, yeah. he gave him the whole punch out. Last year, we had John Jay, you may recall. I think it was a walk. He had five balls, and we had to go back and replay it, and everybody in the ballpark missed it. You know, I think. Yeah, that that first pitch was a ball. So it was not Jeff Nelson's fault. It was the announcer's fault. <laughs> Us. Wait a minute. You don't make gotta, mistakes up here. What gotta, are you talking about? Well, let's. Yeah, normally. Well, it's <laughs> normally on there. true, but not this time. <laughs> He punched him out. He, get out of here. Everybody's standing. Wait a minute. Hold on. We play three in this game here, the big leagues. Three strikes. Even Odebell says that didn't even happen in double A. Punch him out. Two and two. Mea culpa. Mea culpa. <laughs> From both of us. Man. We're in this together, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What a great game. <laughs> Telling you. And that ball scoots away. Molina sliding and no play. Harang advancing to third. Revere to second base. That's the problem with that slider sometimes. It is so good. It's tough to block and center if you're Molina. The spin on that ball hit his chest protector. Squirted into foul territory toward the Philly dugout. That's a guy that doesn't slide very often. You no, can tell there. No. It's a broken ankle waiting to happen. So wild pitch, second and third. Corners are in. 
middle infield is in a bit. I think Herrera will probably get another slider here. The 3 2. And it's a base hit into right. One run is in. Hayward with a strong arm. They'll hold up the runner. He fires a strike to the plate. Throw it out of third. In a rundown, Molina needs help, and he'll get it here. Tagging him out, Johnny Peralta, and what a throw by Hayward. An absolute cannon from right field. Okay, the Cardinals were perfect on that play by everybody. From the beginning with Hayward to the end with Peralta. You know how far Johnny Peralta came on that play? All the way from second to third. Because initially he had to stay at second base for the runner who hit the ball. And that's Herrera. Now Molina almost had to wait so long while Peralta got over to the bag. But a terrific play by Johnny Peralta and Molina and started by Hayward even though the Phillies took the lead. So it goes nine to two to five to two to six. A base hit. For Herrera his seventh RBI he's two for three tonight. Think about the arms on that play in particular Hayward and Molina to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And granted Hayward didn't hit the cutoff man. But a pretty good trade as allowing Herrera to go to second base. You do get the out of Revere the second out of the of the inning. Phillies have their first lead. Here's Chase Utley. Fastball misses low and away. Talking the other night in game one, thinking about outfielders that really could throw the ball. I mean, you know, what we just saw there Jason Hayward, Jeff Francoeur, certainly. Mm -hmm. There aren't many. Not many at all. Two and out. Gold Glover in Kansas City, former third baseman, moved to left. Alex Gordon. That's a good one. See his catch the other night, diving into the stands. I heard about it. I didn't see it. Amazing. To walk Utley to get to Francoeur, who is 0 for 2. So third time through the lineup now for Carlos Martinez has hit a little bump in the road. One of the great arms in right field I think about is Dave Parker. You talk about an arm. Dave Parker had a heck of an arm. Mark Witten. There was only one Clemente. That's the other one. So he's one and everybody else is one. Every, yeah, yeah. That's, you I got, got you. It. You got it. One and oh on Fran Corp. Grounded to second and struck out in the fourth. You knew who had a good throwing arm from right field? Henry Aaron. Is that right? Yes, sir. Not when he was older now, after he had spent 15 years in. In the big leagues with primarily with Milwaukee and then they moved to Atlanta. I think he spent like 16 years in Milwaukee mm -hmm. from 53 to 66 was the first year in Atlanta. Correct. So I think yep. that's 13 13 years. Got away with that pitch one and two. Everybody talks about the offense the hits the home runs. You overlooked that part of the game, the defense. Outfielders throwing runners out has, for the most part, disappeared in the major leagues. Don't see guys throw often. No. And I mean before games. Right, right. One two pitch, tapped foul.
Cardinals have not had an outfield arm like Hayward's in a long time. Jim Edmonds won gold gloves, but his was accurate, not nearly as strong. There's the slider, and Frank Cora throws the bat at it and strikes out. Beautiful night here in St. Louis. And it's 2 1 Phillies. Just six dollars each to see the Cardinals take on the Diamondbacks, Brewers, and Twins. Six dollar tickets. That's it. Six bucks. Now at Cardinals.com slash famous footwear. So don't delay. This offer is too good to miss. Wong Martinez and Peter Borges. And just to finish the conversation about arms, I mean Ricky Ankeel had a ridiculous arm. I mean it was one of the strongest arms in the last 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. There were two throws that he had in Colorado that Cardinal fans will never forget. The problem was, you know, accuracy, and that's what Clemente had, and Mark Witten had, Hayward has. You know, you see that they are on the bag or hitting the cut, mm -hmm. one hops, mm -hmm. you know, the true hops that you want to get. That's a base hit into right. Colton Wong is two for two. I still enjoy watching an outfielder throw the baseball. They said his first time up to drive in the only Cardinal run. So Wong two for two. Been very important here for Carlos Martinez to get the bunt down. He is a good bunter by the way. Yes. And he pushes that one foul. Strike one. Almost stepped across the plate. You can do that after you bunt. But not before you bunt, of course. I guess that's stating the obvious, right? You can handle the bat. Sometimes you'll see the Cardinals. Not many, but show bunt, pull back, and swing. Martinez would be a good enough athlete to do that, but showing mm -hmm. bunt, one and one. Certainly keeps the out the infielders honest. What about in this situation, just letting Wong try to steal the bag? And then bunt him to third? Yeah. You're bunting to tie. I think you bunt. Good bunt. Up the first base line, only play for Howard. Is to Utley for the first out. Nicely done by Martinez. 
Love the drink run with any size, any flavor. McCafe Shank for just $1.99 at McDonald's. Borges is fly to center and also struck out. Big gap in left center field. And that's a base hit into right, slicing fair and into the corner. This game is tied. Watch Borges run to second, on his way to third, in there with a triple. First ball hitting, hanging slider, scoots by Jeff Francoeur, Borges, his own coach on the bases, in there to tie the game and be at third with one out. Tim, that is exactly what the Cardinals have been trying to preach to Peter Borges going the other way. He's been getting that steady diet of, you know, middle, outer half, the slider, take it the other way, pulls similar, off that pitch. Similar to Jason Hayward. Sure. Jason trying to pull too much, the same with Borges. Nice piece of hitting. This game is tied, and now you get Matt Carpenter up. Borges led the American League in triples four years ago. Infield is in. Carpenter has struck out twice. And Harang is trying to pound Carpenter inside. That's what he struck him out with a fastball on a 3 2 pitch his first time up. And the 0 1. Ground ball. Howard to the plate. And save! Under the tag, and how about the speed of Borges coming into play? With the infield in, we saw Carlos Ruiz of the Phillies score the other night. But when you think of all the things that could happen, just by bringing the infield in is no assurity that you're going to get the runner at home, particularly when he can run like Borges. Right foot took off immediately and scores and gives the Cardinals the lead. And the right foot came down on the plate before the tag was made. Very good call by Jeff Nelson, the home plate umpire. Ryan Sandberg wants to have a replay of this and challenge. I think that shot we had, the foot was up momentarily, Dan. And before the tag was made, the way I saw it was the foot came back down on the plate. Now, Could be wrong, but that's how I saw it. If this is overturned, and let's say he's called out for argument's sake, you're going to see Mike Matheny, I would assume, pop out of the dugout and say, okay, where's he supposed to slide? What's yeah, the rule? Right. Right? Right. Where's he supposed to go? What about the catcher blocking home plate? And that's the point. You know? I mean, the, the gray area with this, and it's still... And you and I talk about it. I mean, you could go to anybody right now down there wearing a Phillies uniform or a Cardinals uniform and, and say you might get both right. 30 different answers yeah, on what the rule is. That they're both right. It seems to me that if a catcher blocks the path of a, of a base runner to the point where by blocking that path, it creates the out, I mean, that's that's not legal under the new rules. Correct. It seems to me. Now Peter Borges on that play, looking at one of the replays, he didn't bowl him over, he and he could have into it. And if he yeah. wanted to, he could have. Exactly. You know, that's the thing, is that. But the point you made, I think, is the is the point. What's he supposed to do? Right. And it's supposed to eliminate uh, collisions. However, right. If the catcher is blocking the plate, Peter Borges. Could have 
bowled him right over and right. sent him into the front row. Exactly. Because there's not a lane to go for. I think, however, I don't know this for sure, and help me out. Is Sandberg saying that there was really, there's no block in the plate or no uh, bullet, no going in to him, but we think that he made the tag before the foot came down. That's, I think, what he is challenging, and this is what we talked about the other day. You and I had a couple of games, Rick and I, uh, Al as well, and uh -huh. we've done games where we think he's challenging the tag. That's my assumption here. Let's see what the call is. But there's no explanation, and the call is safe. I think it's the right call. I do, too. It would be interesting to ask Mike Matheny, if it was overturned, would you have gone out and said, hey, he's blocking the plate. See, the, the right foot goes up in the air. Up right there. But it comes back down before the tag was made. And Jeff Nelson made the right call to begin with. Cardinals, by the way, Tim, teach their catchers now to actually be roughly three to four inches in front of the plate. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you receive the ball, you're still there to put the tag down, but there's about six to ten inches of a lane for a runner to stick the foot in, the hand in, whatever, towards the left of the catcher. Right. And, and that's if you look what, at Ruiz, that's, that's, that's not what, the case. That's what, we're, that's what creates the swipe tag. Right. If you're on the plate, you can't swipe tag. He's already... He's already touched the plate. Or he's if, in you, the yeah, catcher. Yeah, if you're in front of the plate, you can apply the swipe tag. How about Mike Matheny, though, putting Borges in the number one hole? Coming up in spades here in the fifth inning. Fun to watch guys throw. Fun to watch guys run. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Matt Holliday. Used to love watching Willie McGee fly around the bases. Oh, and Borges, when he gets it going, I mean, he's one of the fastest players you're going to see in the league. He really is. And that was an interesting trip around the bases for Peter. I'd say. He'll turn him loose on 3 0. Here it comes. Instead, Harang steps off. Holiday robbed by Chase Utley in the first and popped up back in the third. What a cut that was. Matt came in with an on-base percentage here in the first month of 500. And he walked him. First walk issued by Harang. That's part of it. All the walks that Holiday has received this year, 15 to go along with an average of 383 at the start of play, fourth best in the National League. So highest on base percentage this year, Holiday Rizzo, Peterson Jones, and DJ LeMayhew, who's leading all the baseball in hitting. I remember your comment in Chicago, the first game we did this year on that on that uh, Wednesday Wednesday night or Tuesday night Tuesday night I guess mm -hmm. saying that the one thing Matt Holiday told you in spring training that stuck with you was that he had to get off to a better start this year well has he ever done that and he's even talked about you know what I'm 35 age is catching up a little bit sure sure I need to get off to a better start as Adams hits it fair off the sidewall and a run will score. That's Carpenter. Holiday digging for third and Matt Adams. His second double tonight picks up an RBI. Matt with three hits last night. His second hit tonight plating the fourth run. And taking advantage of the third baseman way off the line. Tim, we were talking with Matt Adams today in the dugout, and he said, 
I love being in this town because every at bat, every game is scrutinized. He said oh, it's, a, yeah. it's a great baseball town. He said now on the flip side of that, sometimes when you struggle, you know the numbers will be there. You're also screwed. They, the thing about good baseball fans is they scrutinize struggle and they scrutinize great things. Exactly. You got to take the good with the bad or the bad with the good. And that's what he was saying. Yeah. He said, well, you're not going right. I get it. And when I'm going right, I hear the praise. And he said, I, I just love playing in this town because people treat baseball with such reverence and respect. Well, even if you're a great hitter, though, you're going to be scrutinized when you struggle 70 percent of the time. Right. <laughs> Best in the world do it three out of ten. Right. You know. Here's Peralta now in the infield in with one out. Runners at second and third in a 4-2 St. Louis lead. Third time through the lineup. In his career, opponents have hit 288 against him. 4-2 lead, and with the lead, you're inclined to take chances. Holiday probably running on a ground out. And that's it out to left base hit. Adams to third. Holiday scores. That makes it 5 to 2 St. Louis as Peralta picks up his 11th RBI. A lot of good noise at Bush Stadium the last two nights. Cardinals doing a lot of things right offensively. Now it's Hayward who's two for two. Aaron Harang has thrown nearly 2,200 innings in his career. And among active pitchers who've never played in the postseason, he has the most innings ever thrown of those that are still around. Felix Hernandez, R.A. Dickey, they have not been to the postseason. And you Felix Hernandez that, is something. Oh, he's it. awesome. I mean, you never hear a quote by him saying the Mariners don't get him enough runs, ever. You talk about a lack of run support? Oh. Man. Oh, dreadful since his career began. Exactly. Oh, one pitch now to Hayward. And where he plays, you're not going to hear a lot about him either. No, that's Seattle. true. That, that's a very good point. Late night games. So Philly, Atlanta, Mariners, Mets, Dodgers, Padres, Cincinnati. That's where he spent. From a, from most a geographic time. standpoint, there's nothing the Mariners can do about that. No. And there's nothing baseball can do about that. They'll travel about 42,000 miles this year. Mm. Mm. Most by a wide margin in baseball. Hayward is swing and a miss. And Harang gets a much needed strikeout, his fifth. Molina 0 for 2. Molina up the middle will it find a hole to his left Galvis and with Molina running they're able to get him so the Cardinals strand two they pick up four and a five two St. Louis lead.
by baseball in-game highlights, live look-ins, and instant replay all at MLB.com. 5-2 lead, top of the six rolls in. Really big Cardinal fan is at uh, St. Luke's in Chesterfield. Esther Meyer and Justin, her grandson, works here at the Cardinals, has worked here for years. So, Esther, hope you're feeling better. Get down to the ballpark soon. And also Jeff Davis in Springfield, Missouri, big, big Cardinal fan. And we want to send uh, get well wishes to him dealing with uh, an ailment. And uh, Jeff Davis in Springfield, get better soon and come to the ballpark. There's a good changeup by Carlos Martinez to Ryan Howard. Howard a home run back in the fourth. And then a play in shallow right by Colton Wong to take a hit away. the lone bright spot tonight for Philadelphia. One of their six hits. Jason Hayward almost had it that home run into the bullpen in right. 0-2 now 1-2. Phillies come into play tonight last in the major leagues in scoring. Their average is under three runs per game. They have not averaged less than three runs per game in a month of 20 or more games since May of 1989. Wow. Nice play again by Wong, and maybe that's why Mike Schmidt said, I've had enough, because it was May of 89 in San Diego, I believe. It was in San Diego. He retired. It was it 89? Yeah. There's Cody Ashey, one for two. Speaking of Mike Schmidt, talks to Cody at least once a week. If I were a third baseman in the major leagues, he'd be the guy I'd want to talk to. None better in the history of the game. Get up the middle to his left, Peralta. Two down. Reminder, it's a day game tomorrow, series finale. Come on down for Buchanan against Cooney, making his Major League debut. That's at noon, Budweiser, what's on tap? Head on over to Ballpark Village afterwards, the Rams' official draft party. Busy day of sports here in downtown St. Louis. Tim Cooney, Major League debut tomorrow. Grew up a Phillies fan. Looking forward to watching that. Carlos Ruiz 0 for 2. He was robbed by Peralta his first time up, and that's taken just a bit high. Tim, there are six National League teams that have not used a left-handed starting pitcher this year. I mean, we're a month into the season just about. Mm -hmm. The plight of left-handed starters. Arizona, Cincinnati, Miami, Milwaukee, San Diego, the Cardinals. Just the second time in the modern era. So that's since 1900 that six teams in one league have caught this long in a season without using a lefty starter. It's that rare. Two and two on Ruiz. There's no question left-handed starters can get by with less. They can't throw the ball straight. That's the biggest reason. Right-handers have to use finger pressure, cut a ball, sail a ball, sink a ball. Left-handers do it more normally than right-handers. Probably the biggest reason. Get a left-handed throwing outfielder. Can't throw the ball straight. That becomes a real problem. Mm -hmm. Daryl Strawberry, strong arm. Daryl Strawberry, by the way, who lives in St. Louis now. Lives in St. Charles. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say one of the most hated Mets in the 1980s oh. here in St. Louis. Oh, when it was Whitey against Davey. 
Awesome. Whitey Ball against Davey Johnson. What titanic battles Great two years. teams made. My goodness. This year celebrating the 30th anniversary of the 85 championship team. And Whitey Herzog telling us the other day, most publications had him going into that year as the first manager to be fired. And then he goes out and they go to the World Series. And if not for a bad call, you never know in game six of the World Series in Kansas City. Maybe Whitey gets his second championship here in St. Louis. And one begets another. If they win in 85, they could have the momentum to win in 87. Maybe, you know, that might sure. be a stretch. But it might not be. We, we as announcers have the right to stretch things. Have the right and not only the right, <laughs> we the do. And the duty. <laughs> it's constant. Of course. It's what we do. Of course. Hey, we have three hours plus every night to fill, exactly. okay? Yeah. Three and one to count. That team in 85, though, I mean, you look at that era of baseball and you had the 40s, your era in the 60s, the 80s was so much fun. And that generation of fans grew up with Ozzie Smith, Vince Coleman, Willie McGee, Tommy Hurd, Terry Pendleton, Jack Tito Clark. Landrum. Tito Landrum played a key part. Tito Landrum took Vince Coleman's place when Vince hurt his knee, famous tarp tarpaulin accident before the series started in a workout here at, at uh, Bush 2. Vince came up. He told Whitey, I'm not ever going back down. And he did. He was only supposed to be up for a weekend. And then he just went off stealing bases. And the rest is history. He ran his way in the Whitey's arms. <laughs> Whitey loved him. Loved the stolen base. The turf. Three two. Juan to his left, spins and makes the play. We're midway through six. Cardinals on top five, two. Official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. It is StubHub. Jim Hayes, Tim McCarver, and Dan McLaughlin with you, our entire Fox Sports Midwest crew. Five to two, St. Louis.
There have been many great magicians and soothsayers in the history of this world. I'm sitting next to one. When you say Colton Wong, when he makes a good play in the field, he has a good night with the bat. This is the second night <laughs> in the last eight that you've said that, and you've been right on both counts. Well, Wong should then come find me, and we'll talk <laughs> before every game. A little agent action? He, absolutely. <laughs> You know, go over to his bats, his gloves, talk I, to them, I too. I understand. It's all about money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ten more percent of the action. You right? know, superstitions, too. You know, I mean, I'll be happy to help out. Take my normal cut of 53.7%. No big deal. Ruiz puts it away for the out. We have tallied. For Colton Wong, by the way, eight assists. Yeah. And we're only through uh, six innings here for Colton Wong defensively. And the, and the major league record is 12. DJ LeMayhew, that's a, a nine inning game. That was set back in 2012. That's it for Carlos Martinez. Mark Reynolds will be the pinch hitter. The shift is on here for Reynolds as Martinez, his night is through. It seemed like when the, the shift became popular, Tim, in the game of baseball, let's say what, maybe two, three years ago, and now we're seeing it all the time. It was only with left handed batters. You never saw it with a right hander. Now it, it's almost like it's two or three years ago. It's, with a, it's like they're the same type hitters and mm -hmm. they're not. Seeing it a little bit more with guys from this side of the plate. You know, it's interesting that Reynolds is the pinch hitter here instead of John Jay. But I think Mike Matheny wants to use Jay defensively. After Matt Holiday hits, and if the Cardinals go three up, three down, or only send four batters to the plate, then that will not be the case. Strike out of Reynolds. If, on the other hand, Holiday does hit in this inning, then the pitcher coming into the game will bat third, and Jay will go to left field and bat ninth. Six strikeouts for Aaron Harang. Just trying to give you an idea, folks, about you know what a manager is thinking and what his bench coach David Bell's thinking right now. Trying to have every as much covered as they can going into the top of the seventh inning. One of the big hits in this game, Peter Borges, a triple down the right field line. Scored a run, picked up an RBI. He's one for three tonight. And the 0-1 pitch. Up the middle, base hit for Peter Borges. We may see that scenario unfold. Seagrass getting loose in the pen. Kia in the driver's seat, Matt Carpenter. Mentioned it earlier. Matt Carpenter has 30 hits. 16 of the 30 have gone for extra base hits. Now here's a question. You've got a guy that doesn't mind hitting with two strikes. You have a base dealer at first. That's a that's a good point, and and so he takes two pitches to exactly. get him a chance, not one. Not one. Yes. Get to two strikes. I'd say yes, and I wouldn't say that about any other hitter in baseball. Give Borges a chance to run on Harang and Ruiz, there he goes on the first pitch, throw down a second, stolen base, Peter Borges, no, they're going to call him out. I think this might be challenged, because I think the tag was made when Borges was already on the bag. Unless he got the top half of his body. Evidently he did. <laughs> that would be the only way I would think he was out. Got the top half of the body before the foot was there. Elbow, maybe? Maybe, yeah. I guess. Okay. Good throw by Ruiz at the pick, and Borges is out, so that sends us to the seventh. 5 2, St. Louis.
potential theme ticket to Bud Bash and get an exclusive bobblehead and autographs from the 85 National League Champion Cardinals. So don't miss former slugger Jack Clark next Tuesday for a full schedule of players or to purchase tickets, visit cardinals.com slash Bud Bash. Chevy called to the pen. Left-hander Kevin Segrist. Cesar Hernandez, a switch hitter, pinch hitting here to start the seventh inning. Harangue's night is through, and then we'll see the top of the lineup. Tim, it's, it's worth repeating, and, and we've talked about what the Cardinals pitching has done this year. It's a historic start in franchise history. 20th game of the season is tonight. They have allowed a total now of 52 runs. It's 2.6 runs per game. The fewest they have allowed through 20 games in the history of Cardinals baseball, which dates back to 1892. Here's the 0-2. You think about that. Best start ever. That's a lot of games, too, to use as a sample. One-eighth of the season. Your team in 68 had given up 57 at this point. That pitch is popped up. Near the line, Wong is called off by Hayward. Much easier play for him coming in. One away. And Martinez did everything tonight, too. He deflected a couple of balls, knocked the ball down to get the force out at second base, and he sacrificed. George Carlin would have been proud of it in baseball they sacrifice in football it's sudden death <laughs> I saw him in Vegas a couple of times oh my it was gosh. the best brilliant but I mean you know was a key sacrifice yes. it came in in an inning in which they batted around fifth inning and that Inning, they put up a four spot. There's a good breaking ball from Segrist. That's a, a much improved pitch this year, that breaking ball. Mike Matheny was telling us he thinks mechanically Segrist is, he said, maybe just a fraction of an inch off if you were going to put it in those terms. Just, just a slight bit off, but really likes the way that he's throwing the baseball. And the off does not mean velocity. Velocity is not to where it was two years ago, but it's improving mm -hmm. even over spring training. Mm -hmm. First week of the season. A little bit off could, in, could include what only a catcher sees. Mm -hmm. Through the eyes maybe of Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach. Slap the other way and foul. Ben Revere at the plate. Randy Choate and Jordan Walden getting loose. Pop, pop. Ben Revere had 162 singles last year. Most by a Philly since Dave Cash in 1976. Second baseman with the Phillies bounced around a little bit in the 70s, but three years with Philadelphia, he only missed three games. Yes, I can, Dave Cash. That was his motto. Yep. Instead of maybe we can, he came over and coined the phrase, yes, we can. And they did. Outfield shallow, 0 2 pitch, and Wong almost had it. It's into right center. Hayward cuts it off and quickly gets it back into the infield. Nice play by the Cardinals right fielder. How about that? 
How many times do you see a right fielder pivot, pirouette, and throw a strike to second base from dead center field? Dead center field. Straight away center field. Watch. <laughs> Never seen that. No. You see a center fielder cut in front of the left fielder or right fielder, but not the other way that often. Here's Herrera, who is two for three. Infield hit and an RBI base hit to right last time up. That was in the fifth. We talked the other day about when is it the right time to move a, a starter to a relief role in the minor leagues or vice versa. Kevin Segrist good example of that. Cardinals did two things that helped propel him to the big leagues. One was moving him to a relief role and then moving him to the third base side of the rubber. That really changed things. In on right handed hitters. Two years ago, Tim, it didn't matter. Lefty, righty, he was getting everybody out. Yeah, but it's awkward anyway for a left handed pitcher to be on the, as you're looking at it from home plate, the right side of the rubber or the first base side of the rubber. It makes no sense. Or the middle of the rubber. The leverage comes from the, from the third base side of the rubber for a left handed pitcher. Popped up. Shallow left. Here's Holiday coming on, and he makes the catch. Revere back to the bag at first. The Mazda game summary. Here for game number three of the four game series. Harang six innings. Ryan Howard, a solo home run. Carlos Martinez, six solid innings. And Matt Adams, two for three, pair of doubles, and an RBI. The Mazda game summary. Chase Utley. Intentional walk back in the fifth. Is grounded out to second and popped out to first. Utley is now hitting 116. We saw him last night go to left field, which he does not do very often. Line drive that picked up an RBI. They'd love to see him go more that direction. Talking with some of the Phillies personnel, they feel at times he can pull off a lot of pitches. Man, what a career he's had. See the Cardinals play way off the line at third. Some of you folks listening may be familiar with the poem by A. E. Hausman. The name of it is To an Athlete Dying Young. And its essence is that this one athlete died before he had the chance to see the downside. Because it's not pretty, the downside of a career. And Chase is going through that right now. 0 oh, 2, just missed. However, an addendum to the poem is my bank account is going up. I think he's making 17 million this year. I don't think AE put that in there. <laughs> Had to throw that out there. <laughs> There's an update on the poem. Yeah, the modern version. Of, right. The modern version of that poem would be a lot different <laughs> for A. E. Hausman, great, 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 great grandson.
the 2-2. Two -two. Now 3-2, and, two and Revere is off with the next pitch. And Matt Adams moves behind the runner at first base. Play it like there's nobody on. There goes the runner and Utley hits it out to deep right center field. That's well hit on the run. Oh, what a catch. Peter Borges robs Utley in right center. How about that play? For the first time in a long time, Peter Borges has been the star of this game. Wow. I didn't think he had any chance to get to that ball. Time to stretch. to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. What a play here by Peter Borges. There wasn't a lot that went right for Peter last year. No. And... I think you're right on in the fact that McGowan is the new pitcher that this has been an all-around game to see what kind of player at times he has been with the Angels and the kind of player the Cardinals were hoping to get. Yes. His speed has been a big factor tonight. You think about the triple. The ground ball to first with him at third. He's probably the only guy that scores on that play. Maybe Wong. Maybe Wong. Maybe. But I think Peter had that great jump at third base. And a great jump on the play moments ago. Oh. One and one the count on Matt Carpenter. We saw McGowan last night. Our Chevy Cole to the pen. His eighth appearance this year. We had a function uh, here at the stadium before the game. With uh, some of our friends from the radio side, uh, AM, FN, FM throughout Cardinal Nation, seven states, I guess. And Mike Matheny was up there and he said, uh, uh, Well, I got credit because I changed the lineup last night. He said, And I'll probably get credit tonight for putting Borges in there, unless he goes 0 for 4, <laughs> and then I'll be an idiot. Right. 
It's Mike life is a big league manager. Uh, that, yeah, that's exactly right. And everybody, you know, he got a laugh, and it was funny. But it's oh so true. We love you, winter tie. <laughs> Great Tough job. Buck. He told that to Tony the Russo. They'll love you, Tony. Winter tie. <laughs> winter tie. But all the moves that have to be made throughout a season, throughout a game. And you're just simply not going to be right all the time. That's all. We were talking uh, before the game about a manager in 2015. Not, not just Mike Matheny or Ryan Sandberg or Joe Madden. Just in general, a manager in 2015. The reality is... You're the face of the franchise in many ways as Carpenter lines out to first and Howard throws it into right center. Well, times are tough here with the Phillies. So you think about just the, the responsibility of the media, the electronic media and television, and that's why you're the face of a franchise. Yeah. And you're meeting with the print media, electronic media, social media, everything. The money is different. The agents interfere more than they should. That's a major problem. I always see it uh, when we go to L.A., but interesting that Scott Boris front row tickets right behind home plate at Dodger yes, Stadium. Yes, sir, baby. So not allowed on the field. However, during BP, players associated with him come on over and visit. Even even though I've seen Scott Boris on the field during batting practice at Wrigley Field last year. With Chris Bryant, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not with Chris because I, I didn't do a game with you when Chris was up last year. So it was two years was, ago then? It was two years ago. When he was yeah. drafted, yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the reasons that catchers make good managers because they're used to making decisions behind the plate and not caring about the outcome because they know what the decision to call a pitch. They know what pitch to call for. It just may not be thrown right. So making decisions as a manager is similar to making decisions as a catcher. Who knows? We've said it several times. Who knows what the right pitch to call for? I mean, you're going with odds. That's all. Tonight, Fox Sports Live will get you caught up on a full day of baseball highlights from across the league, including a career first for A-Rod. Plus, amidst the unrest in Baltimore, we have a scene from Camden Yards. You have to see to believe. That's all right here after the game on Fox Sports Live. Did you see any of that game today by any chance? I did, Dan. It's almost like it's uh, it's almost eerie to think about it or to talk about it. And I know our job is to talk about things like that, but what a eerie feeling. Now, there was a bright spot in that game. Oh, I'm sure. Gary Thorne doing the play-by-play. -play yes. In the seventh inning. Adam, Funny guy. Great oh, he's guy hilarious. And a good buddy. I love him. Yeah, Knew him when he was too. doing hockey. And oh, yeah. He's, he's just a great character, tremendous announcer. If you get a chance, look for those of you that can get it on MLB.com. And there's a fly ball into center that carries to Herrera. <laughs> Gary Thorne did Adam Jones at bat as if he was doing the Masters. So the whole place is quiet. <laughs> and Jim Palmer's working with him. <laughs> and, he, and he put it off the wall. So and he Gary, did it. So Gary Thorne became Jim Nance. Right. And he says something to the effect of, and Adam Jones will wind up at second base, and he has a chance at the green jacket as we head to 14. <laughs> and it was an absolute rocket to center. Oh, that's it's hilarious. Wonderful. Oh, that's great. No one in the ballpark, no atmosphere. And by the way, the game took barely over two hours. 
It's like 206, 204, something like that. Some 203, writer, we're told. Some writer will write a, a column tomorrow saying that crowds at ballparks are responsible for longer games. <laughs> and this is proof of it. They still had the walk up music, too, by the way. Oh. And I did see a couple of the players actually go over to. Well, basically where the tarp is here at the ballpark, and that's where they sign a lot of autographs. A couple of guys were faking signing <laughs> autographs and handing out fake balls, <laughs> signing it. A little levity. Let me tell you something. That's what our country needs is a little levity. And unfortunately for the Orioles, they will shift now to Tampa Bay in what was supposed to be a weekend series against the Rays. Ground ball to third. And a force play at second. That sends us to the eighth inning. 5 2, St. Louis on top. Sports update with Pat Paris. How about that? It's Colby Rasmus fifth RBI in three games two home runs five RBIs so now 14 and 7 Wow Houston Chevy call to the pen here's Jordan Walden talking with Jordan Walden the other day I said how did you develop this particular odd delivery to the plate his answer I have no idea he said, just one day, I'm playing catch. I started doing this, and it has stuck ever since. He also told me there was a team last year, because I said, do you, do you ever get issues about the back leg not being on the rubber as he delivers towards the plate? He said, in his career, one team actually did call the commissioner's office. To, I, I, would, I believe that. Yeah, and he said they reviewed the tape and deemed him legal because he starts on the rubber and then it comes off as he delivers the pitch. So here's the 0-2 to Fran Corp. I mean how do you teach something like that? No. You don't. Jordan off to a great start. Here's a 1-2. Frank Core 
with a fly ball into right. There's Hayward, the former Brave. Retires a former Brave in Francoeur. Celebrate Cinco de Mayo with Los Cardinales de, de San Luis with the purchase of a special Cinco de Mayo themed ticket. Fans will receive an exclusive Cardinals chip and dip tray. So grab your sombrero, head to Bush Stadium. That's May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Start giving you some of the copy. <laughs> That'll be fine. Cinco de Mayo. Los Cardinales de San Luis. <laughs> Fastball and a strike. One and one. Howard is homer tonight. Ground ball into the shift again. Colton Wong from shallow right makes the play. It's almost like uh, you were looking for Colton Wong to hit the cutoff man. He's so he's so deep. That's his ninth assist of the night. The play he made earlier for fans that didn't see it. They had a shift on. It went past Matt Carpenter who was at second base. Who dodged for the ball. Right. It was playing fairly deep yeah. and uh, ranging to his right Colton Wong. That has to be so frustrating for these hitters. I mean again you've done it all your life you've hit the ball hard that side you're going to get a base hit right. Yeah, there are holes on that side of the infield. Yeah. I've heard the commissioner say that he wanted to curtail the dramatic shift. And a lot of people. How's he going to do that, though? How, how can you tell. Exactly. Uh, where, where are you going to say to stop? Did, but yeah, a man who did, uh, who's a coach and has all the, the numbers to back it up. How are you going to tell him not to shift? I mean, you can't do that. I don't think. Agreed. It's another aspect of what he's talked about in trying to open up the offense in the game mm -hmm. because the shift has had a major part right. in dropping the offense. When Boston was in town last year, we mentioned how when the Cardinals faced the Red Sox in the World Series, they actually shifted on Ted Williams. Luberdo, Luberdro. The Boudreau shift when Boudreau was the playing manager for the Cleveland Indians. And actually that led to the World Series at 46 against the Cardinals.
Budweiser. Still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. So here it is for Ryan Howard. Hitting into the shift here tonight. One way to beat it. Put one over the wall, which he did do. But this is the play we were talking about. What a play by Wong with the backhand. Only home run in this series has been hit by Howard. But the shift, this must be frustrating for him. Could be four for four. He's one for four. You could see when he tried to beat that play, by the way, he was limping on the other side of first base. A remnant of the Achilles tear back in 2011. Ryan telling me when he had the Achilles tear that the surgery can be performed, uh, performed on the side of the ankle, mm -hmm. towards the back, or directly on the back. And he, that's where he had his. Mm -hmm. And he had to have a follow-up surgery because of infection. And they find that if you have it on the back of the heel, if you will, mm -hmm. and Eduardo Perez is here at the ballpark working for ESPN, and he had it as well, he was told that if you have it on the back of the heel, there's more room for infection as opposed to going on the side. Now, I'm not a doctor, and I haven't torn my Achilles, but there's some more information to think about potentially. Mm -hmm. As Hayward bounces it to second, there's Utley. Jenmar Gomez is our Chevy call to the pin. And join us tomorrow for the official St. Louis Rams Bud Light draft day party at Fox Sports Midwest Live at Ballpark Village. Great giveaways, specials, and appearances by players, cheerleaders, and Rampage. Rams draft day party tomorrow, 5.30, following Cardinals baseball. I have not talked to John Mabry uh, about Jason Hayward, but I hope to do that tomorrow. And I wonder if John's thinking, if he can eliminate the 4-3 to three from Jason Hayward, then he would, would do a lot toward creating a different hitter. I think that's what Jason's fighting right now is at four to three out. Second so, base to, to first base. And here's you out of your Molina. Reason for that, you're pulling that front shoulder a little bit. There's another four three, but that's it's a totally different thing for a right handed hitter. But a left handed hitter, you're pulling something prematurely. Just, you know, it could be infinitesimal. But if he can eliminate that, he'd be a lot better hitter. Look like the pros. We have a Matt Carpenter batting practice jersey coming up this Saturday. Cards and Pirates, the batting practice jersey. Get here early. Cardinals.com slash promotions. Here's Colton Wong. I think it kind of it furthers your point, Tim, that you've made with left-handed hitters going the other way as Wong. It's a high fly ball. That'll stay in the ballpark. So you either go with the pitch, and if not, you roll over on it. That's right. Keeping that front shoulder in prevents that.
well rested Trevor Rosenthal in a 5 2 St. Louis lead. He's 7 of 7 in save opportunities. He has not pitched since Friday at Milwaukee in just 11 pitches in that appearance. So, four straight days. He is not pitched, and he gets Carlos Ruiz to lead off the top of the ninth. It's always a fine line, isn't it, with closers and getting them the right amount of work and not overworking them? Mm -hmm. Like a recipe. Not enough, they could be wild. Too much, they could be wild in the strike zone. Sure. <laughs> There's a strike two and one. Familia, closer of the Mets, leads the National League with nine. And Rosenthal is tied with Jason Grilly, who's the closer in Atlanta. Both have seven. Ball, goodbye. Strikeout of Ruiz. Two straight balls, three straight strikes. 13th strikeout this year for Trevor Rosenthal. I'd like to explain something. I said wild in the strike zone. What that means is that some pitchers throw strikes, but the strikes are too fat, and the hitters can put the fat part of the bat on the ball. Square it up as the hitter said. So throwing strikes is not good enough. It's where the strikes are. The pitchers used to say the inside and outside two inches are mine. The middle 13 is the hitters. And for the most part, that's true. Plate being 17 inches wide. There's a broken bat on a hop to Cold Wong. What a night he's had. That's now nine and a third this season for Rosenthal and only two hits allowed. Budweiser player of the game, Peter Borges, two for four, triple, single, RBI, and run scored. Good for Peter. It's been a tough, I'd say, year and a half for Peter. You know, you get traded, and then your first year you're injured with the hip. Can't show what you know you can do. And he's done that here tonight. That's well put. Brady Sizemore, the final hope for the Phillies. Wong, that would have been the way to end it. Base hit into center for Grady Sizemore. Wong just couldn't get to it. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ben Revere. Outfielders reminded. To throw the ball to second base. The runner at four, first, for the most part, does not exist. You have a two run lead, not a one run lead. Sizemore does not take second base. We'll see if he does on this pitch. Chris Maloney watching intently. Fielder's indifference, and now Sizemore at second base. One and one the count. Yeah, I, I've never understood why a runner wouldn't do that if they're going to give sure, you the base. Absolutely. Normally, the outfield would be in a no doubles defense, but Revere has no power. He went 1,466 plate appearances last year before he hit his first home run, actually, over a period of three years. So he has no power whatsoever. The 2 1 ground ball foul, 2 and 2.
Bottom of the eighth. Pittsburgh leading Chicago by the score of six to one. Start of play tonight. The Cardinals one game in front of the Cubs. Something that was kind of hard to understand, and maybe you could explain it, but the splits with Rosenthal a year ago. I mean, it's just one of those things you looked at him at home, his ERA was around four, and uh, at uh, ballparks outside of St. Louis on the road, it was around one. I have no explanation. Yeah, it's it just I one don't. of those crazy things. You would think, unless it's a mental thing. Pitching in front of the home crowd, but you would think it would the reverse would be true Because he's more used to the home mound 3-2 pitch and he walked him so now That brings up the uh, the tying run It's a dilemma for outfielders here you have a hitter with pretty good power you have a runner on at first base who represents a tying run should he score with speed it's a tough outfield positioning right now when in doubt play him normally and that's what the Cardinal outfield is doing first and second two down Herrera looks at strike one Again, the Phillies down to their final strike. Three to five days rest in his career. Rosenthal, ERA of 2.43. Makes sense. No days rest, so back to back. His ERA is close to four. Got him on the outside corner called third strike 97 on the black and the Cardinals win the game three of this series by the final of five to two. Big night for Borges, big night for Colton Wong. What a good ball game. Really well played, crisply done. Good base running by the Cardinals. Great pitching by Carlos Martinez. And as we said earlier, that sacrifice was a big at bat for Carlos. Carlos now 3 0. Peter Borges, the speed on display tonight. A big triple in the fifth to ignite the offense. Check, check. We'll do it every game.